that man was perfect and upright And one to fear God and them showed evil And that was born unto him seven sons and three daughters His sons also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels And five hundred yoke of ox and five hundred she asked And of every great household so that this man was the greatest in all the men of the east And his sons went and feasted in that house Every one his day And sit and call for their three sisters To eat and to drink with them And it was so When the day of their feast was gone about That Job said and sanctified them And rose up early in the morning And offered burnt offerings According to the number of them all But Job said It may be that my sons have sinned And cursed God in their hearts Thus did Job continually that there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord And Satan came also among them And the Lord said to Satan, what's coming thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth And walking up and down in And the Lord said to Satan, has thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man And one that feared God, and never showed evil then Satan answered the Lord and said, Do Job fear God for not? Has thou not made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he have on every side? That thou bless the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he have, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he have is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughter were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger under Job and said, The oxen were plowed, and the ass feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And not only am I escape alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire God is fallen from heaven and have burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thou sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And not only am I escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this, Job said not, nor charge God foolishly. Shall I want? The book of Job, chapter 2 Again, there was a day when the sons of God Came to present themselves before the Lord And Satan came also among them To present himself before the Lord And the Lord said to Satan From which cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said From going to and fro in the earth And from walking up and down in And the Lord said to Satan Has thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth A perfect and an upright man one that fear God, and who showed thee, and still he upholdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movest me against him, to destroy him without a cause. And Satan asked the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man have, will he give for his life? But put forth thy hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord And smote Job with the sore boar From the sole of his foot to his crown And he took him a pot shell to scrape himself with all And he sat down among the ashes Then said his wife and told him The 
But I still retain that integrity Curse God and die But he said to her Thou speakest is one of the foolish women speak What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall not we receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that came upon him They came everyone from his own place Eliphaz, the Temanite And Bildad, the Shur height Zone 4, the Anamanite For they had made an appointment together to come The mourn with them and to call for him And when they had lifted up their eyes afar off And knew him not They lifted up their voice and wept And they rent everyone his mantle And sprinkled dust up on their head toward heaven So they sat down with them up on the ground Seven days and seven nights And none spake a word of to him For they saw that his grief was very great Show me how we rock a thumb, All praise to the most high. Like you how we Job chapter 3. After this, open Job his mouth and cursed his day. And Job spake and said, Let the day perish when I was born. And the night in which it was said, There is a man child go see. Let that day be dark. Let not God regard it from above. Neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it Let a cloud dwell upon it Let the blackness of the day terrify it As for that night, let darkness seize upon it Let it not be joined until the days of the year Let it not come forth in the number of the months, lo Let that night be solitary Let no joyful voice come therein Let them curse it, they curse the day Who are ready to raise up their morning Let the stars of the twilight, their road be dark Let it look for light but have none, neither let it see the dawn another day Because it shut up not up the doors of my mother's womb Nor hid sorrow from my eyes Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of thy bed? Why did thy knees prevent me? Or why the breast that I should suck? For now, should I have laid still and been quiet? I should have slept, then had I been at rest With kings and counselors of the earth Which built desolate places for themselves all with princes that had gold who filled the house with silver All as it an untimely birth I had not been as infants which never saw light There the wicked cease from trouble And there the weary be at rest There the prisoners rest together They hear not the voice of the oppressor The small and greater death And the servant is free from his mouth Wherefore is life given to him That is in misery And life unto the bitter in soul Which long for death but it coming not, and did for more than for hidden treasures, which rejoice to see Lee and are glad when they can find a grave. Wise light given to a man whose way is hid, to whom God had his did. For my sign coming before I eat, and my ruin I poured out like the waters. For the thing which I greatly fear has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is coming to me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. I show you how we shop a rock a thong. You how we bless the saints. Mm. You how we shine. I be grieved, but who can withhold himself from speaking? Behold, thou hast instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. Thy words have upheld him that was fallen, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. But now when it has come upon thee, and thou faintest, it touches thee, and thou art troubled. Is not this thou fear, thou confidence, thou hope, and the uprightness of thy ways? Remember, I pray thee, whoever perish being innocent, or where 
everywhere where the rights are cut off. Even as if I have seen the thou plow iniquity and so wickedness reap the same. By the blast of God, they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils, they consume. The roaring of lion and the voice of the fierce lion and the teeth of the young lions are broken. The old lion perish for lack of prey and the strout lions. Wealths are scattered abroad. Now a thing was secretly brought to me, and my ear received a little thereof. And thoughts from visions of the night, when deep sleep fell upon me, and fear came upon me, and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Then the spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form of that robe. An image was before my eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, Shall more the man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly. How much less then in them that dwell in the house of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the moth. They are destroyed from the morning and the evening. They perish forever without any regard. Do not their excellency, which is in them, go away. They die even without wisdom. Joel, the servant of the Lord, chapter 5, it out. call now, if there be any that will answer thee, and to which of the saints will thou turn, for wrath killeth the foolish man, and envy slayeth the silly one, I have seen the foolish taking root, but suddenly I curse his habitation, his children are far from safety, and they are crushed in the gate, neither is there any to deliver them, whose harvest the hungry eat it up, and take it even out of the thorns, and the robber swallowed up their suffers. Although affliction coming not forth for the dust, neither do trouble spring out of the ground. Yet man is born in the trouble, and the spark fly up. I will seek unto God, and unto God will I commit my cause. Which do a great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Who give it rain upon the earth, and send the waters upon the fields. The set of the high of those that be low, and those which mourn may be as all the safety. He disappointed us, the devices of the craft, so that their heads could not perform their enterprise. He take the wise of their own craftiness, and the counsel of the board is carried headlong. They meet with dogs in the daytime, and grope in noonday as in the night. But he saved the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. So the poor have hope, and iniquity stop in her mouth. Behold, happy is the man who God corrects. Therefore despise not now the chastening of the Almighty. For he make a sword, and bind it up. He wound it, and his hands make holes. He shall deliver thee in six troughs, yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death, and in war, from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh, and destruction, and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beast of the earth, for thou shalt be in the league with the stones of the field, and the beast of the earth shall be in peace with thee, and thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt Fear that thou habitation and shall not see it, and shall know also that thou see shall be great, and thy offspring as the grass of the earth. Thou shall come to thy grave in the full age, like as a shock of corn covered in his seas. Lo, this we are searched, so it is here, and know thou it, for thou good. Chapter 6 But Joel answered and said Old up my grief But thoroughly weighed And my calamity Laid in the balance together But now it would be heavier Than the sand of the sea Therefore my words are swallowed up For the arrows of the Almighty Are within me The poison wherewith Drinketh up my spirit The terrors of God Do set themselves on the ray against me Do the wild ass break When he had grass Or lowered the ox Over his father Can that which is unsavory Be eaten without salt or is there any taste in the white of an egg? The things that my soul refused to touch Or as my sorrowful meat All that I might have request That God would grant me the things that I long 
gon' fall Even that it would please God to destroy me That he would let loose his hand and cut me off Then should I have yet comfort, yay I would harden myself in sorrow Let me not spell, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One What is my strength that I should hope And what is my end that I should prolong my life Is my strength the strength of stones Or is my flesh a brass It's not my helping me And his wisdom driven quite from me To him that is afflicted Pity should be skewed from his friend But he forsaken the fear of the Almighty My brother have dealt deceitfully as a brook And as the stream of brooks They pass away Which are blackish by reason of the ice And wherein the snow is hid What time they wax warm they vanish When it is hot They are consumed out of their place The paths of their way are turned aside They go to nothing and perish The truths are timber Look to the companies of Shabbat Waiting for them They were confounded because they had hope They came thither and were ashamed For now, ye are nuts Ye see my casting down and are afraid Did I say, bring them to me Or give a reward for me Of your substance or deliver me From the enemy's hand Or redeem me from the hand of the mighty Teach me and I will hold my tongue And cause me to understand wherein I have air How false are more right words But what do your arguing reprove Imagine to reprove words and the speech of one that is desperate, which are as wind. Yea, ye overwhelm the fatherless, and you dig a pit for your friend. Now, therefore, be content, look upon me, for it is evident unto you if I lie. Return, I pray you, let it not be iniquity. Yea, return again. My righteousness is in it. Is there iniquity in my tongue? Can that my taste discern perverse things? Book of Job chapter 7 Is that not an appointed time To man upon earth Are not his days also like the days of a hireling As a servant earnestly Desired the shadow and as a hireling Looking for the reward of his work So am I made to possess months of vanity And where are some nights are appointed to me When I lie down I say When shall I arise And the night be gone And I am full of tossing to and fro Until the dawn of the day My flesh is clogged with worms and clouds of dust my skin is broken and become loathsome My days are swifter than the weaver's shuttle And I'm spent without hope Oh, remember that my life is wind My eyes shall no more see good The eye and him that have seen me Shall see me no more Their eyes are upon me And I am not as the clouds consume And vanish away So he that goeth down to the grave Shall come on no more He shall return no more to his house Neither shall his place know him anymore Therefore I will not refrain my mouth I will speak in the anguish of my spirit, I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I a seat or a well? Did thou set up a watch over me? When I say my bed shall come for me, my couch shall ease my complaint. Then thou scares me with dreams and tears find me through veggie. So that my soul chooses strangling and death rather than life. I loathe it, yea. I will not live always. Let me alone for my days of vanity. What is man that thou shouldst magnify him? And that thou shouldst set thy heart upon him? And that thou shouldst visit him every morning? Morning, and try him every moment How long will thou not depart from me Nor let me alone till I swallow down my spit I have sinned, what shall I do unto thee O thou preserver of men Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee So that I am burdened to myself And why does not thou pardon my transgression And take away my iniquity For now shall I sleep in the dust And thou shalt seek me in the morning But I shall not be Supplication to the Almighty 
If thou were pure and upright, surely now you will wait for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy letter end should greatly increase. For inquire, I pray thee of the form of age and prepare thyself to search out the false. For we are but of yesterday and know nothing, because our days upon the earth are shadow. Shall not they teach thee and tell thee? In other words, out of their heart, bring it out. Can the rest grow up without the mind? Can the flag grow up without war? While it is yet in the greenness and not cut down, it withered before any other herb. So all the paths are all that forget God. And the hypocrites, hope should perish. Whose hope should be cut off, and whose trust should be aspired as well. He should lean upon his house, but it should not stand. He should hold it fast, but it should not endure. He is green before the sun, and his branch shoot the forth in his garden. His roots are wrapped about the heat, and see if the place of stones. If he destroy him from his place, then it shall deny him, saying, I have not seen thee. Behold, this is the joy of his way, and out of the earth shall others grow. Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evildoers. So he filled our mouth with laughter, and our lips with rejoicing. They that hate thee shall be clawed with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. The book of Job, chapter 9 Then Job answered and said I know it is, so of a truth But how should a man be just with God? If he will contend with them, he cannot answer him One of a thousand He is wise and hard And mighty in strength Who have hardened himself against him And has prospered Which removed the mountains And they know not Which overturned them in his anger Which shaketh the herb out of her place And the pillars thereof trembled Which commanded the sun And it rise them not And still up, up the stars Which alone spread it out the heavens And thread upon the ways of the sea Which maketh our tourists And Orion And Pleiades And the chambers of the south Which do a great thing Past finding out Yea, and wonders without numbers Lo, he go by me And I see him not He pass on also But I perceive him not Behold he taketh away, who can hinder him? Who will say unto him, what does thou? If God would not withdraw his anger, the proud help us do stoop under him. How much less shall I answer him and choose out my words to reason with him? Who, though I was righteous, yet would I not answer? But I would make my supplication to my judge. If I had called and he had answered me, yet would I not believe that he had hearkened unto my voice? For he breaketh me with a tempest and multiplied my wounds without cause. He would not suffer me to take my breath, but filling me with bitterness. If I speak of strength, lo, he is strong and of judgment. Who should set me in the time to plead? If I justify myself, my own mouth should condemn me. If I say I am perfect, it should also prove me perverse. Though I were perfect, yet would I not know my soul? I would despise my life. This is one thing, therefore, I said. He destroyed the perfect and the wicked If the scourge slay, suddenly He would laugh at the trial of the innocent The earth is given into the hand of the wicked He covered the face of the judges thereof If not, well, and who is he? Now my days are swifter than the post They flee away, they see no good They are passed away as the swift shifts As the eagle that hasten to the prey If I say, I will forget my complaint I will leave all my heaviness and comfort myself I am afraid of all my sorrows I know that thou will not hold me innocent If I be wicked, why then labor I in vain? If I wash myself with snow water And make my hands never so clean Yet shall thou plunge me into the ditch And my own clothes shall abhor me For he is not a man as I am That I should answer him And we should come together in judgment Neither is there any days between us That might lay his hand upon us both Let him take his rod away from me and let not his fear terrify me Then would I speak and not fear him But it is not so with me Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shah, Barak Adon All praise to the Most High By Yahweh Shah, He come. Chapter 
My soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say unto God, Do not condemn me. Show me wherefore thou contendest with me. Is it good unto thee that thou should have oppressed, that thou should have despised the work of thy hands, and shine upon the counsel of the wicked? Has thy eyes of flesh, or seest thou as a man seeth? Are thy days as the days of man, are thy years as man days? That thou inquires after my iniquity and searches after my sin? Thou knowest that I am not wicked, and there is none that can deliver out of thy hand. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me together round about. Yet thou dost destroy me. Remember, I beseech thee that thou hast made me as the clay, and when thou bring me into the dust again, has thou not poured me out as milk and curdled me as cheese? Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh and has fenced me with bones and sinews. Thou hast granted me life and favor and thy visitation has preserved my spirit. And these things, as thou hid in thy heart, I know that this is with thee. If I sin, then thou makest me and thou will not acquit me from my iniquity. If I be wicked, woe unto me. And if I be righteous, yet will I not lift up my head? I am full of confusion, therefore see thou my affliction, for it increaseth. Thou hunted me as a fierce lion, and again thou showest thyself marvelous upon me. Thou renewest thou witnesses against me, and increaseth thou indignation upon me. Changed in war are against me. Wherefore then hast thou brought me forth out of the womb? Oh, that I had given up the ghost, and no eyes have seen me. I should have been as though I had not been. I should have been carried from the womb to the grave. Are not my days few? Cease then and let me alone, that I may take comfort a little. Before I go whence, I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. A land of darkness as darkness itself, and of the shadow of death, without any order, and where the light is as darkness. In our tabernacles, for then shall thou lift up thy face without spot. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not feel, because thou forget thy misery and remember it as if the waters that pass away, and thy age shall be clearer than the new day. Thou shalt find forth, thou shalt be as the morning, and thou shalt be secure, because there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in safety. Also, thou shalt lie down, and none shall make thee afraid. Yea. Many shall be suited in the lead, but the eyes of the wicked should fail, and they should not escape, and their hope should be as the giving up of the ghost. Job chapter 12, and Job answered and said, No doubt, but ye are the people, and wisdom shall die with you. But I have understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you, yea, 
Who know not such things as these? I am as one mock of his neighbor Who call up upon God and he answer him The just and upright man is loud to scorn He that's ready to slip with his feet Is as a lamp despised in the thought of him That is at ease The tabernacles are raw as prosper And they that provoke God are secure And to whose hand God bring up abundantly But as now the beast And they should teach thee And the fowls of the owl And they should tell thee or speak to the earth, and it should teach thee And the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee Who know not in all these That the hand of the Lord hath wrought this And whose hand is the soul of every living thing And the breath of all mankind Do not the ear try words And the mouth taste his meat With the ancient is wisdom And in length of days understand it. With him is wisdom and strength He hath counsel and understanding Behold, he breaketh down And it cannot be built again he shut up up a man, and there can be no open. Behold, he withholding the waters, and they dry up. Also, he sending them out, and they overturn the earth. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. He leadeth counselors and waste spoil, and maketh the judges fool. He loosened the bonds of kings, and gird their loins with the girth. He lead the princes of waste spoil, and overthrow the mighty. He remove away the speech of the trusty. And take away the understanding of the age He poured contempt upon princes And weakened the strength of the mighty He discovered the deep things out of darkness And bring them out to light the shadow of death He increased the nation He destroyed them He enlarged the nation And straightened them again He take away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth And caused them to wander in the wilderness Where there is no way They grope in the dark without light And he maketh them to stagger like a drunken man Playing the bone tapes, son of one. You hide by ship, you hide with shop, I rock the bone free. The book of Job, chapter 13 Lo, my eye have seen all this My ear have heard and understood it What ye know, the same do I know also I am not inferior unto you Surely, I will speak to the Almighty And I desire to reason with God But ye are forges of lies Ye are all physicians of no value Oh, that ye will all together hold your peace And this should be your wisdom Hear now my reasoning And hearken to the pleading of my lips Will you speak wickedly for God And talk deceitfully for Him Will you accept this person Will you contend for God It is good that He should search you out Or as one man mock of another Do you so mock Him He will surely reprove you If you do secretly accept person Should not His excellent make you afraid And this dread fall upon you Your remembrances are like unto ashes Your bodies to the bodies of clay Hold your peace Let me alone that I may speak let come on me what will Wherefore do I make my flesh in my teeth And put my life in my hand Though he slay me, yet will I trust him But I will maintain my own ways before him He also should be my salvation For a hypocrite should not come before him Hear diligently my speech And my declaration with your ears Behold now, I have ordered my cause And I know that I shall be justified who is he that will plead with me? For now, if I hold my tongue, I should give up the ghost. Only do not two things unto me. Then will I not hide myself from thee. Withdraw thy hand far from me, and let not the dread make me afraid. Then call thou, and I will answer, and let me speak, and answer thou me. How many are my iniquities and sins? Make me to know my transgressions and my sins. Wherefore, hidest thou thy face? And holds me for thy enemy Will thou break a lead driven to and fro And will thou pursue thou dry stubble For thou writest bitter things against me And making me to possess the iniquity of my youth Thou puttest my feet also in the stocks And looketh narrowly unto all my paths Thou set a prick upon the heels of my feet And he, as a rotten thing, consumed As a garment, that is small thee Shalom to the devout men and women 
Let the 12 say, Baraka thought you how, Baraka thought you how was shot. Baraka thought you how, Baraka thought you how was shot. The king come. Book of Job 14. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He coming forth like a flower and is cut down. He flew of all so as a shadow and continue it not. And does not open thy eyes upon such as one and bring me in the judgment with thee. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has upon his bounds that he could not pass. Turn for him that he may rest, that he shall accomplish. As a hireling, his day, with the as hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the roof thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it shall bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. But man died and wasted away, yea, man give it up the ghost. And where is he? As the waters fall from the sea, the flood decay and drive up, so man lies down and rise or not till the heavens be no more. They should not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Oh, that thou wouldst hide me in the grave, that thou wouldst keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldst appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time, will I wait till my change come? Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou will have a desire to work of thy hands. But now thou numbers my steps. Does thou not watch over my sin? My transgression is sealed up in the bag. And thou sowest up my iniquity. And surely the mountain fall and come the knock. And the rock is removed out of its place. The waters were the stones. Thou washed away the things which grow up out of the dust of the earth. And thou destroyed the hope of man. Thou prevailest forever against him. And he passed. Thou changing his continents and sending him away, his sons come to honor, and he know of it not, and they are brought low, but he perceive it not of them, but his flesh upon him shall have pain, and his soul within him shall mourn. Book of Job 15. And then answer Eliphaz the Tamanite and said, Should a wise man of the vain knowledge and fill his belly with the east wind? Should he reason of unprofitable talk or with speech wherewith he can do no good? Yea, thou castest off fear and restrain the prayer before your house. But thou mouth utter thy iniquity and thou choose the tongue of the craft. Thou own mouth condemn thee. And not I, yea, thy own lips testify against thee. Are thou the first man that was born, or was thou made before the hills? Has thou heard the secret of God, and dost thou restrain wisdom to thyself? What knowest thou, that we know not? What understandest thou, which is not in us? With us are both the gray-headed and very aged men, much elder than our father. Are the consolation of God small with thee? Is there any secret thing with thee? Why does thou hard carry thee away? And what do thy eyes wink at? That thou turnest thy spirit against God And let such words go out of thy mouth? What is man? That he should be clean And he which is born of a woman That he should be righteous Behold, he put no trust in his sights Yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight How much more abominable and filthy is man Which drink of iniquity like water I will show thee, hear me And that which I have seen, I will declare which wise men have told from their fathers and have not hid it? Unto whom alone the earth was given, and no stranger passed among them. The wicked man travailed with pain all his days, and the 
number of years is hidden to the oppressor. A dreadful sound is in his ears. The prosperity of the destroyer should come upon him. He believed not that he should return out of the darkness, and he is waited for of the sword. He won of abroad for bread, saying, Where is it? He know that the day of darkness is ready at hand. Trouble and anguish should make him afraid. They should prevail against him as a king ready to the battle. For he stretched out his hand against God and strengthened himself against the Almighty. He run up on him, even on his neck, upon the thick box of his bullets. Because he covered his face with his fatness and make him collops of fat of his flanks. And he dwell in desolate cities and in house which no man inhabited. Which are ready to become heats, he should not be rich. Neither shall his substance continue, neither shall he prolong the perfection that rub upon the earth. He should not depart out of darkness, the flames shall dry up his branches, and by the breath of his mouth shall he go away. Let not him that is deceived trust in vanity, for vanity should be his recompense. It should be a cost before his time, and his branch should not be green. He should shake off his unright grace as the vine. And shall cast off his flower as the olive For the congregation of the hypocrites Shall be desolate And fire shall consume the tabernacles Of bribery They can see mistress And bring forth vanity In their belly prepare the seed The book of Job, chapter 16 Then Job answered and said I have heard many such things Miserable comforters are ye all Should vain words have an end? Or what emboldened them need to die? Answer it out I also could speak as ye do If your soul were in my soul's head I could heap up words against you And shake my head at you But I will strengthen you with my mouth And the moving of my lips Shall assuage your grief Though I speak, my grief is not swayed And though I forbear, what am I ease? But now, he has made me weary Thou has made me desolate All my company, and thou has filled me with wrinkles Which is witness against me And my lean is rising up in me Bear witness to my face He tear me in his route Who hated me, he gashed upon me With his teeth, my enemy Sharpened his eyes upon me they have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten me upon the cheek, reproachfully. They have gathered themselves together against me. God hath delivered me to the ungodly and turned me over into the hands of the wicked. I was at ease, but he had broken me asunder. He have also taken me by my neck and shaken me to pieces and set me up for his maw. His arts can pass me round about. He cleaveth my reins asunder and do not spell. He poured out my gall upon the ground. He break me with the breach upon the breach. He runneth upon me like a giant. I have sold sackcloth upon my skin and defiled my horn in the dust. My face is fire with weeping and on my eyelids is the shadow of death. Not for any injustice in my hands. Also my prayer is pure. O earth, cover not down my blood and let my cry have no place. Also now Behold, my witness is in heaven and my record is on high. My friends score me, but my eye poured out tears on the God. Oh, that one might plead for a man with God as a man plead for his name. When a few years are come, then shall I go to wait once I should not return. Book of Job, chapter 17. My breath to corrupt. My days are extinct. The graves are ready for me. Are not there markers with me? 
And do not my eyes continue in their provocation Lay down now, put me in the surety with thee Who is he that will strike hands with me? For thou hast hid thy heart for understanding Therefore shall thou not exalt them He that speak of flattery to his friends Even the eyes of his children shall fail He have made me also a byword of the people And aforetime time I was at a tavern My eye also is dear my reason, my song And all my members are as a shadow Upright men shall be a stone at this And the innocent shall stir up himself against the hypocrite The righteous also shall hold on this way And he that have clean hands shall be stronger and stronger But as for you all, do you return and come now For I cannot find one wise man among you My days are past, my purposes are broken off Even the thoughts of my heart, they change the night and the day the light is short because of darkness If I wait, the grave is my house I have made my bed in the darkness I have said the corruption Dollar my father to the worm Dollar my mother and my sister And where is now my hope? As for my hope, who should see it? They should go down to the bars of the pit When I rest together, it's in the dust Book of Job, chapter 18. Then answered Bill Dad, the Shahite, and said, How long will it be ere we make an end of work? Mark it afterwards, we will speak. Wherefore, are we counted as beasts and reputed vile in your sight? He teared himself in his anger. Shall the earth be forsaken for thee? And shall the rock be moved out of his place? Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. The stealth of his strength should be straight, and his own counsel should cast him down. For he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walketh upon the snap. The gin should take him by the heel, and the robber should prevail against him. The snares laid for him in the ground, and the trap for him in the way. Terror should make him afraid on every side, and should drive him to his feet. His strength should be hunger bitten. And destruction shall be ready at his side It shall devour the strength of his skin Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle And it shall bring him to the king of terrors It shall dwell in his tabernacle Cause it is none of his Brimstone shall be scattered upon his inhabitation His roots shall be dried up beneath And above shall his branch be cut off His remembrance shall perish from the earth And he shall have no name in the street He shall be driven from light in the darkness and chased out of the world he should neither have son nor nephew among his people nor any remainder in his dwellings they that come out to him should be a stone at his day and they that went down before war fright surely such are the dwelling of the wicked and this is the place of him that know of not god Job 19, Bring it out. then Job answered and said, How long will you vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? These ten times have you reapproached me. Ye are not ashamed that you make yourself strange to me. And be it indeed that I have erred, my own error remain with myself. If indeed you will magnify yourselves against me, plead against me my reproach. Know now that God have overthrown me and have compassed me with his neck, behold. I cry out of wrong, for I am not heard. I cry loud, but there is no judgment. He has fixed up my way that I cannot pass, and he has set darkness in my path. He has stripped me of my glory and taken the crown from my head. He has destroyed me on every side. I am gone, and my hope have you removed like a tree. He has also kindled his wrath against me. He counted me unto him as one of his enemies His troops come together and raise up their way against me And encamp round about my tabernacle He'll put my brethren far from me And my acquaintances are very estranged from me My kinsfolk have failed And my familiar friends have forgotten me 
They that dwell in my house and my maze count for me a stranger. I am an alien in that sight. I called my servant and he gave me no answer. I treated him with my mouth. My bro is strange to my wife. Though I treated for the children's sake of my own body, yeah. Young children despise me. I rose and they spake against me. All my inward friends abhorred me. And they whom I love are turned against me. My bone cleave to my skin and to my flesh. And I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Have pity upon me. Have pity upon me. Oh, ye my friends. For the hand of God have touched me. Why do you persecute me as God? And I'm not satisfied with my flesh. Oh, that my words were now read. Oh, that they were printed in a book. They that were graven with the iron pen and laid in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he should stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy my body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. Though my reins be consumed within me, but you should say, why persecute we him? Seeing the root of the matter is found in me. Be ye afraid of the sword, for rap bringing the punishment of the sword. That you may know there is a judgment. Shalom. So far, then the Amethyst and said, Therefore, do my thoughts cause me to answer? And for this I make haste. I have heard the check of my reproach, and the spirit of my understanding causes me to answer. Know thou not, this is of old, since man was placed upon the earth, that the triumph of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite before a moment. Though his excellent mind up to the heavens, and his head reaching to the clouds, yet he should pass forever. Like his own dawn, they which have seen him shall say, where is he? He should fly away as a dream, and should not be found, yea. He should be chased away as a vision of the night. Now I also which saw him, shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hands shall restore their goods. His bones are full of the sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, Though he hid it under his tongue, though he spared and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his meat is in his bowels, his turn. It is as the gall of apps within him. He has swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. He shall suck the pores and the apps. The viper's tongue shall slay him. He should not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey and butter. That which he laid before shall he restore and shall not swallow it down. According to his substance shall the restitution be. And he should not rejoice therein because he have oppressed and have forsaken the poor. Because he have violently taken away a house which he built not. Surely he should not feel quietness in his belly. He should not save but that which he desires. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he should be estranged. Every hand of the wicked should come upon him when he is about to fill his belly. God should cast the fury of his wrath upon him and should rain it upon him while he is eating. He should flee from the iron weapon and the boil steel should strike him through. It is drawn and come out of the body, yea. The glittering sword coming up out his guard tearing all upon him. All darkness should be hid in this secret place. A fire not blown should consume him. It should not go ill with him. That is left in his tabernacle. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity. 
and the earth shall raise up against him. The increase of his house shall depart, and his good shall flow away in the day of his wrath. This is the portion of a wicked man from God, and the heritage appointed unto him by God. Yeah, how? Joel chapter 21, break it out. But Joel answered and said, Hear diligently my speech, and let this be your consolation. Suffer me that I may speak. And after thou hast spoken, mark on, answer me. Is my complaint the man? And if it was so, why should not my spirit be troubled? Mark me and be astonished. And lay your hand upon your mouth, even when I remember I am afraid, trembling, take hold on my flesh. Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea. Almighty in power, their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. Their hounds are safe from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. They are bull gendered, and fail of not, their calf cast it, and cast not her calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance, and take the temple in heart, and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth, and in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore, they say unto God, depart from us, but we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How often is the candle what the wicked put out? And how often cometh that destruction upon them? God distributed the sorrows in his anger. They are as stubble before the wind. And as a shaft that the storm carried the way, God laid up his iniquity for his church. He rewarded him, and he should know it. His eyes should see his destruction, and he should drink of the wrath of the Almighty. For what pleasure have he in his house after him, when the number of his month is cut off in the midst? Should any teach God knowledge, seeing he judges those that are high? One dieth in his full strength, being holy at ease and quiet. His breasts are full of milk, and his bones are moistened with marrow. And another died in the bitterness of his soul, and never eat it with pleasure. They shall lie down alike in the dust, and the worms shall cover them. Behold, I know your thoughts, and the devices which you wrongfully imagine against me. For ye say, where is the house of the prince? And where are the dwelling places of the wicked? Have ye not asked them to go by the way? And do you not know their tokens? That the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Who shall declare his way to his face? And who shall repay him what he have done? Yet shall he be brought to the grave and shall remain in the tomb. The clouds of the valley shall be sweet unto him, and every man shall draw after him. And there are innumerable before him. How then come for ye me in vain? Seeing in your else there remaineth falsehood. Joel 22. Then Eliphaz the Tamanite answered and said, Can a man be profitable unto God? As he that is wise may be profitable unto himself. Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous? Or is it gain to him that thou makest thy ways perfect? Will we reprove thee, fulfill thee? Will he enter into thee into judgment? Is not thy wickedness great and thy iniquities infinite? For thou hast taken a pledge from thy brother for not and stripped thy naked of their clothes. Thou hast not given water to the weary to drink, and thou hast withholding bread from the home. But as for the mighty man, he hath the earth 
and the honorable man dwell in it. Thou hast sent widows away empty, and the arms of the fathers have been broken. Therefore, snares are round about thee, and sudden fear trouble of thee, or darkness that thou cannot see, and the abundance of water cover thee. Is not God in the height of heaven? And behold, the height of the stars, how high are they? And thou sayest, How do God know? Can he judge through the dark cloud? Thick clouds are covering to him that he see not, and he walk up in the circles of heaven. As thou marked the old way which wicked men have thrived, which will cut down the time whose foundation was overflown from a flood. Was said unto God, Depart from us, and what can the Almighty do for them? Yet he filled their house with good things, but the counsel of the wicked is far from me. The righteous see it and are glad, and the innocent laughed in the scorn. Whereas our suffering is not cut down, but the remnant of them to the fire consumed. Acquaint not thyself with him, and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in thy heart. And thou return to the Almighty, thou shall be built up. Thou shall put away iniquity, fall from thy tabernacles. Then shall thou lay up gold, dust, and the gold of earth. And the stones of the brook, yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then thou shalt have thy delight in the Almighty, and shalt lift up thy face unto God, and thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. And he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established on the deep, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, There is lifting up. And he should save the humble person. He should deliver the island of the innocent. And it is delivered by the purities of thy hands. Book of Job 23. Then Job answered and said, Even a day is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I will order my call before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he was saying to me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he will put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him, so shall I be delivered forever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there and backward, but I cannot perceive him on the left hand. When he do work, but I cannot behold him. He hide himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him, but he know the way that I take. When he have tried me, I shall go forth as gold. My foot have held his steps. Way have I kept and not declined, neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. But he is in one mind, and who can turn him? And what his soul desires, even that he do it. For he performed the thing that is appointed for me, and many such things are with him. Therefore I am troubled at his presence. When I consider, I am afraid of him. For God making my heart soft and the almighty trouble of me. Because I was not cut off from before the darkness Neither have he covered the darkness from my face Job 24. Why? Seeing times are not hidden from the Almighty. Do they that know him not see his days? Some remove the landmarks. They violently take away flocks and feed their rugs. They drive away the ass of the fatherless. They take the widow's ox for a pledge. They turn the needy out of the way. The poor of the earth hide themselves together. Behold, as wild lasts in the depths. Go they forth to their work, rising betimes for a prey. The wilderness, yield the food for them and for their children. They reap everyone his corn in the field, and they gather the vengeance of the wicked. They call the naked. 
the lodge without clothes That they have no covering in the cold They are wet with the showers of the mountains And embrace the rock for want of a shelter They pluck the fathers from the branch And take a pledge of the poor They cause him to go naked without clothes And they take away the sheep from the home Which make oil within their walls And thread their wine press And suffer thirst Men grown from out of the city And the soul of the wounded cry out Yet God lay not father to them They are of those that rebel against the light They know not the way they run Nor abide in the paths they run The murderer rising with the light Killing the poor and needy And in the sight is as a thief The eye also of the adulterer Waiting for the twilight Saying, no eye shall see me Disguise his face In the dark they did through house Which they have more for themselves in the daytime They know not the light For the morning it's to them Even in the shadow of death Even one know of them they are in the terrors of the shadow of death. He is swift as the walls. Their portion is cursed in the earth. He will hold it not the way of the vineyards. Drop the heat, consume snow waters. So that the grave those which have seen the wounds shall forget him. The worms shall feed sweetly upon him. He should be no more remembered. And wickedness should be broken as a tree. He evil entreated the barren that bear not. And does not good to the widow. He draws all souls the mighty. With his power he rides of up. And no man is sure of life. Though it be given him to be in safety. Whereupon he rested. Yet his eyes are upon their ways. They are exalted for a little while. But are gone and brought low. They are taken out of the way. As all others. And cut off at the top of the ears of corn. And if it be not so now. Who will make me alive and make my speech nothing worse? Huh. Huh. Joel 25. Then answer Bill died. But sure height and said, Dominion and fear are with him. He make a peace in his high places. Is there any number of his arms? And upon whom does not the light arise? How then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Behold, even to the moon. It's shining not yet, the stars are not pure in this sight How much less a man that is a worm And the son of man which is a worm Book of Job 26. But Job answered and said, How hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm that had no strength? How hast thou counseled him that have no wisdom? And how hast thou plentifully declared the things as it is? To whom hast thou other words? And whose spirit came from thee? Dead things are formed from under the waters, and the inhabitants thereof. Hell is naked before him, and the structure have no covering. He stretch out the north over the empty place, and hang the earth upon nothing. He binding up the waters in the thick clouds, and the clouds is not writ under them. He holding back the face of his throne, and spreading his cloud upon it. He hath compassed the waters with bounds, until the day and night come to an end. The pillars of heaven tremble, and are astonished at his reproof. He divide the sea with his power, and by his understanding, he smiteth through the proud. By his spirit, he hath garnished the heavens. His hand hath formed the crooked serpent. Lo, these are part of his ways. But how little a portion is heard of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? Book of Job 27. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, Is God living? Who have taken away my judgment? And the Almighty, who have vexed my soul? All the while, my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you till I die. 
I will not remove my integrity from me My righteousness I hold fast And will not let it go My heart should not reproach me So long as I live Let my enemy be as the wicked And he that rise up against me As the unrighteous For what is the hope of the hypocrite Though he have gain When God taketh away his soul Will God hear his cry Will trouble come upon him Will he delight himself in the almighty Will he always call upon your house I will teach you by the hand of God That which is with the almighty Will I not conceal, behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are you thus altogether vain? This is the portion of the wicked man with God, and the heritage of the oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring should not be satisfied with bread. Those that remain to him should be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. Though he heap up silver as the dust, and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare, but the judge should put it on, and the innocent should divide the silver. He build his house as a mark, and as the boot that the keeper make. It. The rich man shall lie down, but he should not be gathered. He opened his eyes, and he is not terrors. Take hold on him as waters. A tempest stealing him away in the night. The east wind carried him away, and he departed. And that the storm hurled him out of his place. For God should cast upon him, and not spell. He will fain flee out of his hand. Men should clap their hands at him They should hiss at him Out of his place Surely, there is a vein for silver and a plate for gold Where they can find it, iron is taken out of the earth And brass is molded out of the stone He set it in the end of darkness And search out all perfections, the stones of darkness And the shadow of death, the flood breaketh out from the inhabitant Even the water forgotten on the foot They are dried up, they are going away from men And as for earth, out of it coming bread And under it is turned up as it were fire the stones of it are the place of sapphires that have dust of gold. There's a power which no fire nor, and which the vaulters eye have not seen. The lion's wealth have not threatened it, nor the fifth land passed by. He put it forth his hand upon the rock. He overturned the mountains by the roots. He cut it out rivers upon the rocks. And as I see it, every precious thing, he binded the floor from overflowing. And the thing that is here, bringing heat forth the light. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man know him, not the price thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. The deaf said, it is not me. And the sea said, it is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with gold of Ophra. With the precious onyx or the sapphire, the gold and the crystal could not equal it. And the exchange of it should not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coal or the pearls. For the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia should not equal it. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Which then comes wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? See, it is hid from the eyes of all living, and kept closed from the fowls of the out. The stretch and the death said, We have heard the fame thereof with our ears. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knew what the place thereof. For he looked to the ends of the earth, and see under the whole heaven, to make the way for the winds. And he weighed the waters by measure, when he made a decree for the rain, and the weight for the lightning of the thunder. Then did he see it, and declared, he repaired it, yea, and searched it out. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. The book of Job, chapter 29. Behold, Job continued his parable and said, Only thou work, as in the months past, and in the days when God preserved me, 
When this candle shined up on my head and went by his light, I walked through darkness as I was in the days of my youth. When the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me, when I washed my steps with butter and the rock poured me out rivers of oil, when I went out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the streets, the young men saw me and hid themselves in the age of rose and stood up. The prince refrained talking and laid their hands in their mouth. The nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard me, then it blessed me. And when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me. Because I delivered the poor that cried and the fatherless. And him that had none to help him, the blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me. And I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it caught me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind, and feet was out to the lame. I was a father to the poor, and the cause which I knew not. I searched out and break the jaws of the wicked, and pluck the spoil out of his teeth. Then I said, I shall die in my nest. And I shall multiply my days as the sand My root was spread out by the waters And the dew lay all night upon my branch My glory refreshing me And my bow was renewed in my hand Unto me, men gave ear and waited And kept silent at my counsel After my words they spake not again And my speech dropped the bone them And they waited for me as for the rain And they opened their mouth wide as for the light of rain If I laughed on them, they believed in that in the light of my countenance, they cast not down. I chose out their way and set chief and dwelt as a king in the army, as one that comforted the mourners. All praise. Job chapter 30 But now They that are younger than I Have me in the ridge Who follows I will have the stain To have sit with the dogs of my flock gate Where to might the strength of their hands profit me Of whom old age was past For want and famine They were solitary Fleeing into the wilderness And former time desolate and waste Who cut up Milo by the bushes And juniper roots for their meat They were driven forth from among men they cried out to them as they as a thief To dwell in the clefts of the valleys In caves of the earth and in the rocks Among the bushes they prayed Under the depths they were gathered together They were cheering the fools, yea, cheering the base men They were violent in the earth And now I am their song, yea I am their by word, they abhor me They flee far from me And spare not to speak in my face Because they have loosed my cord and afflicted me they have also let loose the bridle before me Up on my right hand, rise to you They push away my feet And they raise up against me the ways of their destruction They mark my path, they set forth my calamity They have no help, they came up on me As a wild breaking of the walls In the desolation, they rolled themselves up on me Terrors are turned upon me They pursue my soul as the wind And my welfare passeth away as a cloud and now my soul is poured out upon me The days of affliction have taken hold upon me My bones are pierced in me in the night season And my sinews take no rest By the great force of my disease Is my garment changed It bound me about as the collar of my coat He had cast me into the mire And I have become like dust and ashes I cry in the deep And thou dost not hear me I stand up and thou regardest me not Thou love become cruel to me with thy strong hand, thou oppressed thyself against me. Thou lifted me up to the wind. Thou caused me to ride upon it and dissolve it, my substance. For I know that thou wilt bring me to death and to the house appointed for all living. How be it? He would not stretch out his hand to the grave. Though 
they cried in his discretion Then that I weep for him that was in trouble Was not my soul grieved for the poor? When I looked for good, then evil came unto me And when I waited for light, there came darkness My bowels bore and rested not The days of affliction prevented me I went mourning without the sun I stood up and cried in the congregation I am a brother to dragons And a companion to owls My skin is black upon me And my bones are burnt with heat my heart also is turned to the morning And my organ into the voice of them that we The book of Job 31 I made a covenant with my eyes Why then should I think upon the maid? For what portion of God is there from above? And what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is not destruction to the wicked And the strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? Do not he see my ways and count all my steps? If I have walked with vanity Or if my foot have hasted to the sea Let me be weighed in an even balance That God may know my integrity and my step have turned out of the way And my heart walk out of my eyes And if any blood have cleaved to my hands Then let me sow and let another eat, yea Let my offspring be rooted out And my heart have been deceived by a woman Or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door Then let my wife grind into another Let others bow down upon her For this is a heinous crime Yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judge what is a fight that consumes to destruction? The world root out all my increase. If I did despise the cause of my manservant, all my maidservant, when they contended with me, what then shall I do when God rises up? And when he visited, what shall I answer him? Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did not one fashion us in the womb? If I have withheld the poor from their desire, or have caused the eyes of the widow to fail, or have eaten my morsel and myself alone, and the fathers have not eaten their rug. For from my youth he was brought up with me, as with the fathers, and have guided her from my mother's womb. If I have seen any perish for wanting of clothing, or any poor without covering, if his lungs have not blessed me, and if he were not worn with the fleece of my sheep, if I have lifted up my hand against the fatherless when I saw my help in the gate, then let my arm fall from my shoulder blade. And my arm be broken from the bone For the destruction from God was a terror to me And by reason of his highness I would not endure If I have made gold my hope Or have said the fine gold Doll of my confidence If I rejoice because my wealth was great And because my hand had gotten much If I beheld the sun when it shine Or the moon walking in brightness And my heart had been secretly enticed Or my mouth had kissed my hand this also bore an iniquity to be punished by the judge For I should have denied the God that is above If I rejoiced at the destruction of him that hated me Or lifted up myself when evil found him Neither have I suffered my mouth to sin By wishing a curse to his soul If the men of my tabernacle said not All that we had of his flesh We cannot be satisfied The stranger did not lodge in the street but I open my doors to the traveler If I cover my transgressions at Adam By hiding my iniquity in my bosom That I feel a great multitude Or did the contempt of families terrify me That I kept silent and went not out of the door Oh, that one would hear me Behold, my desire is that the Almighty will answer me And that my adversary had written a book Surely I would have taken it up on the shoulder And bind it as a crown to me I would declare to him the number of my steps As a prince would, I go near to him And my land cried against me Or that the pharaohs likewise their rug complain If I had eaten the fruits their rug without money Or have caused the owners their rug to lose their life Let thrissles grow instead of wheat And cockle instead of barley The words of Job by envy
Uncle Joe, 32. So these three men ceased to answer Joe because he was righteous in his own eyes. Then was killed the rap of Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, of the kindred of the ram. Again, Joe was his rap kindle because he justified himself rather than God. Also, against his three friends was his rap kindle because they had found no answer and yet had condemned Joe, not Elihu. And waited till Job had spoken Because they were elder than he When Elihu saw that there was no answer In the mouth of these three men Then his wrath was kindled And Elihu, the son of Barakel The Buzite answered and said I am young and ye are very old Wherefore I was afraid And thus not show you my opinion I said they should speak In multitude of years to teach wisdom but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giving them understanding. Great men are not always wise, neither do the age understand judgment. Therefore I said, walking to me, I also will show my opinion. Behold, I waited for your words, I gave ear to your reason. Why you searched out what to say, yea, I attended unto you. And behold, there was none of you that convinced Job or to answer his words. Least you should say, we have found out wisdom. God thrust him down, not man. Now he had not directed his words against me. Neither will I answer him with your speech. They were amazed, they answered no more. They left off speaking when I had waited, for they spake not. Still, still, they answered no more. I said, I will answer also my part. I also will show my opinion. For I am full of mouth, the spirit within me constrained to me. Behold, my belly is as wine which have no vent. It is ready to burst like new bottles. I will speak that I may be refreshed. I will open my lips and answer. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's purse. Neither let me give flattering titles unto man. For I know not to give flattering titles. In so doing, my maker will soon take me away. My tongue has spoken in my mouth My words should be of the uprightness of my heart And my lips should other knowledge clearly The Spirit of God have made me And the breath of the Almighty have given me light If thou canst answer me Set thy words in order before me Stand up, behold I am according to thy wish in God's stead I also am formed out of the clay Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid Neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee Sure that thou hast spoken in my hearing and I've heard the voice of thy word saying, I am clean without transgression. I am innocent, neither is there iniquity in me. Behold, he found an occasion against me. He counted me for his enemy. He put my feet in the stocks. He marked all my paths. Behold, in this, thou art not just. I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he greed not account with any of this matters. For God speak of once, yea, twice. Yet man perceive it not in a dream, in the vision of the night, when deep sleep fall upon men and slumbering upon his bed. Then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instruction that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He keep back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chasing also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. So that his life a whore bread and his soul dancing me. His flesh consumed away that it cannot be seen. And his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draw near unto the grave and his life to the destroyers. Yet there be a messenger with him and interpreter. One among a thousand to show unto a man his uprightness. That he is gracious unto him and said, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found the ransom. His flesh should be fresher than a child's. He should return to the days of his youth. He should pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him. And he should see his face with joy, for he will render unto a man his righteousness. He looketh upon men, and if any say, I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his light shall see the light. Lo, 
All these things Work with God oftentimes with man To bring back his soul from the pit To enlighten with the light of the living Mark well, O Joel Harking unto me, hold thy peace And I will speak If thou hast anything to say, answer me, speak For I desire to justify thee If not, harken unto me Hold thy peace And I shall teach thee wisdom Job 34, furthermore, Elihu answered and said, Hear my words, O ye wise men, and give in to me. Ye that have knowledge, for the air try words, as the mouth tasted meat. Let us choose to us judgment, let us know among ourselves what is good. But Job has said, I am righteous, and God have taken away my judgment. Should I lie against my right? My wound is incurable without transgression. What man is like Job, to drink and don't scorn and like water? Which go up in company with the workers of iniquity And walking with wicked men For he said It profit a man nothing That he should delight himself with God Therefore hearken unto me Ye men of understanding Far be it from God That he should do wickedness And from the Almighty That he should commit iniquity For the work of a man should be rendered unto him And cause every man to find according to his ways Yea, surely God would not do wickedly Neither would the Almighty pervert judgment who will give him a charge over the earth? Or who will dispose the whole world? If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again into the dust. If now thou have understanding, hear this, hearken to the voice of my words, should even he the hate of right govern, and would thou condemn him that is most just? Is it fit to say to a king, thou art wicked, and to the prince, ye are ungodly? How much less to him that accepted not the persons of prince, nor regarded the rich more than the poor? For they are all the work of his hands. In the moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away. And the mighty shall be taken away without hand, for his eyes are upon the ways of man. And he see of all his goings, there is no darkness, nor shadow of death, where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. But he would not lay up on man more than right That he should enter into judgment with God He should break in pieces mighty men without number And set orders in their stead Therefore he know of their works And he overturned them in the night So that they are destroyed He striking them as wicked men In his open sight of others Because they turned back from him And would not consider any of his ways So that they caused the cry of the poor to come unto him And he heard the cry of the afflicted when he give it quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hide his face, who then can behold him? Whether it be done against a nation or against a man only, that the hypocrite reign not, least the people be ensnared. Surely it is meet to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement. I would not offend any more. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I would do no more. Should it be according to thy mind? Will he recompense it? Whether thou refuse or whether thou choose And not I, therefore speak what thou knowest Let man of understanding tell me And let a wise man hearken unto me Joe has spoken without knowledge And his words were without wisdom My desire is that Joe may be tried to the end Because of his answer for wicked men For he added rebellion to his sin He clapping his hands among us And multiplied his words against God Job 35, Elihu spake moreover and said, Thinkest thou this to be right, 
that thou sayest my righteousness is more than God's, for thou sayest, what advantage will it be unto thee? And what profit shall I have if I be cleansed from my sin? I will answer thee, and thou companions with thee, look into the heavens and see, and behold, the clouds which are higher than thou. If thou sinnest, what doest thou against him? Or if thou transgressest, be multiplied, what dost thou unto him? If thou be righteous, what gives is thou him? Or what receive he of thy hand? Thou wickedness may hurt a man as thou art, and thou righteousness may profit the son of man by reason of the multitude of oppression. They make the oppressed to cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty. But none said, Where is God, my Maker, who gives the songs in the night, who teach us more than the beasts of the earth, and make us wiser than the fowls of heaven? There they cry, but none give an answer because of the pride of evil men. Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. Although thou sayest, thou shalt not see him, yet judgment is before him. Therefore, trust thou in him. But now, because it is not so, he hath visited in his anger, yet he knoweth it not in great extremity. Therefore, when Joe opened his mouth in vain, he multiplied words without knowledge. Behold, God exalted by his power, who teach like him, who have enjoined him his way, or who can say, Thou hast wrought iniquity. Remember that thou magnify his work, which man behold. Every man may see it, man may be holding afar off. Behold, God is great, and we know him not. Neither can the number of his years be searched out, for he maketh small the drops of water. They pour down rain according to the vapor that rose, which the clouds do drop. Still a bone man abundantly. Also, can any understand the spreading of the clouds? All the noise of his tabernacle, behold, he spread his light upon it and covered the bottom of the sea. For by them judge he the people, 
He giving me in the bonus With clouds, he cover the light And commanded it not to shine by the cloud That come in between us The north that roll, sure concerning it The cattle also, concerning the vapor The book of Job, the itself At this also, my heart trembled it And it's moved out of its place He attended the lead, the noise of his voice And the sound that goeth out of his mouth He directed it under the whole heaven And his lightning unto the ends of the earth After it, a voice roared He thundered with the voice of his excellency And he would not stay down when his voice is heard God thundered marvelously But his voice, great things does he Which we cannot comprehend For he say to the snow, be thou on the earth Likewise to the small rain And to the great rain of his strength He sealed up the hand of every man That all men may know his work Then the beast go into the dens And remain in their places Out of the south come with the whirlwind And cold out of the north By the breath of God frost is given And the breath of the waters is strengthened Also by watering He worried the thick clouds He scattered his bright cloud And it is turned around about his counsel they that may do whatsoever he command them upon the face of the world and the earth. He calls it to come, whether for correction or for his land or for mercy. Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Does thou know when God disposed them and called the light of his cloud to shine? Does thou know the balancing of the clouds, the wondrous works of him, which is perfect in knowledge? Had thy garments are warm when he quiet the earth by the south wind? Has thou with him spread out? The sky which is strong And there's a molten looking glass Teach us what we shall say unto him For we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness Shall it be told him that I speak If a man speak Surely he shall be swallowed up And now men see not the bright light Which is in the clouds But the wind passes and cleanses them Foul weather coming out of the north Where God is terrible majesty Touching the almighty We cannot find him out He is excellent in power and judgment and in plenty of justice, he would not afflict. Men do therefore fear him. He respect not any that are wise of heart. The book of Job, chapter 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that dark accounts by words without knowledge? The man of thee and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou have understanding. Who have laid the measurements thereof? If thou knowest, or who has stretched the line upon it? Whereupon the fountains thereof fast, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth? As if it had issued out of a womb. When I made the cloud the garment that rolled In the thick darkness I swept the band for it And break up for my decreed place and set bars and doors And said hitherto shall thou come but no farther And here shall thou proud ways be stayed As thou commanded the morning since thou days And caused the day spring to know its place That it might take hold of the ends of the earth That the wicked might be shaken out of it As it turned its clay to the seal and they stand as a garment Bring it out. And from the wicked their lights withhold And the high arms shall be broken Has thou entered into the springs of the sea Or has thou walked in the search of the depth Bring it out. Have the gates of death been opened unto thee Or has thou seen the doors of the shadow of death Has thou perceived the breath of the earth Declare thou know of it at all Where is the way where the light dwelleth And as for the darkness Where is the place thereof That thou should have taken to the bound thereof Thou should have no pals to the house that rose. Right. Was thou rich because thou was born? Or because the number of thy days is great? Right. Has thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or has thou seen the treasures of the hell which I have preserved against the time of trouble? Against the day of battle and war? All praise. By what way is the light parted? Which scattered the east wind upon the earth? Who has divided the water course of the overflowings of the waters? Or a way for the lightning and the thunder to cause the rain on the earth where no this man is, is on the wilderness? There is no man to satisfy the desolate waste ground And the cause of bud of the tender herbs spring forth Have the rain of fall, or who have begotten the drops of dew Out of whose womb came the ice 
in the horrid cross of heaven. Who have gender that takes you? The waters are hid, that's with the stone in the face of the deepest froze. Can thou bind the sweet influence of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Can thou bring it forth, Mather Roth and his seed? Or can thou guide Arcturus with his son? Knowest thou the ordinance of heaven? Can thou set the millions that rub in the earth? Can thou lift up thy voice to the clouds that abundance of water may cover thee? Praise. Can thou send lightning that they may go and say unto thee, Here we are? Who have put wisdom in the inward part? Or who have given understanding to the heart? Who can number the clouds and winds? Or who can stay the bottles in heaven? When the dust grow up into hardness and the clouds cleave fast together. Bring it out. Would thou hunt the prey for the lion? Or fear the appetite of the young lions? When they count in their dens and abide in the cover to lie and wait. Who provided the raven his food when his young was crying to God? They wonder for the lack of meat. Out their sorrows, their young ones are in good lightning. They grow up with corn, they go forth and return not unto them. Who have seen out the wild ass free, or who have loosed the bands of the wild lads, whose house I have made the wilderness and the barren land is dwelling. He scorned the multitude of the city, neither regarded he the crying of the driver, the range of the mouse is his past. He searcheth out after every green thing, green thing. Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee, or abide by thy creel? Can thou bind the unicorn with his band in the far road? Or will he horror the valley after thee? Would thou trust him because his strength is great? Or would thou lead thy labor to him? Would thou believe him that he would bring home thy seed and gather it into thy barn? He gave his dad the goodly wings unto the peacocks. Or wings and fellows unto the ostrich, which leave her heads in the earth and warm them in the dust. And forget it that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beasts may break them. She is hardened against her young ones, as though they were not hugs. Her labor is in vain without fear, because God. I have the pride of wisdom Neither have he imparted to understand What time she lifted up herself on high She scorned the horse and his rider Has thou given the horse strength? Has thou clothed his neck with thunder? Can thou make him afraid as a grasshopper? The glory of his nostrils is terrible He paused in the valley And rejoiced in his strength He called on to meet the armed men He mocked that fear and it's not a fright, not a neither turn he back from the swords. The quiver rather against him, the glittering spear and the shield. He swallowed the ground with fences and rage. Neither believe it he that it is the sound of the trumpet. He said among the trumpets, ha ha. And he smelled the battle afar off, the thunder of the cows and the shout. Though the hawk fly by thy wind and stretch your wings toward the south. Though the eagle bind up at thy command and make his nest so high, she dwelleth in a bite on the rock, up on the Craig on the rock and the strong place. From then she seek the prey, and her eyes behold the far off. Her young ones also suck her blood, and what a slain off, there she is. The book of Job, chapter 40. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contended with the Almighty instruct him? He did reprove God, let him answer. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no farther. Then asked the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, 
Gird up now, Lord, now like a man. I was the man of thee, and declared thou unto me. Without also, this is now my judgment. Without condemn me, that thou mayest be righteous. Is thou the arm like God? Or can thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold, everyone that is proud, and abase him. Look on everyone that is proud, and bring them low, and thread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together, and bind their faces in secret. Then will I confess unto thee, that thy own right hand can save thee. Behold now, be he most, which I made with thee. He eat the grass as an ox, lo, now. His strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his bed now. He moving his tail like a cedar, the sinews of the stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong as pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of Yahweh. He that made him can make his war to approach a tomb. Surely the mountains bring him forth food, where all the beasts of the field play. He live under the shady trees, in the cover of the reed and thins. The shaded trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook can pass him about. Behold, he drank up a river and hasted not. He trusted that he could draw up joy into his mouth. He taketh it with his eyes. His nose pierced through snares. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah Barak a thorn. The book of Job 41. Bring it out. Can I draw without Leviathan with a hook? Or his tongue with the cord, which thou let us down, can now put a hook into his nose. Our boy's jaw through with the thorn. Will he make many supplications under thee? Will he speak soft words under thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? Will thou play with him as with the bird? Or will thou bind him for thy mates? Shall the companions make a bank with him? Shall they part him among thy birds? Can thou fill his skin with barbed iron? Or his head with fish spears? Lay thy hands upon him. Remember the battle, do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down, even at the sight of him? None is so filled that death stare upon him. Who then is able to stand before me? Who have prevented me? That I should repay him whatsoever is under the whole heavens is mine. I will not conceal his paws, know his power, know his calm and proportion. Who can discover the face of his garment? Or who can come to him, the double bridle? Who can open up the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride, shut up together as with a closed seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another, they stick together, that they cannot be sundered. By his nest light, a light do shine, his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go a burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostril go a smoke, as out of the seeing pot a car drone. His breath kill the coals, and the flame goes out of his mouth. In his neck remain the strength, and sorrows is turned to joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves, they cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. Which he raised up himself, the mighty are afraid by reason of breaking, they purify themselves. The sword of him that lay of him cannot hold the spear, the dark, nor the harbor gun. He is steaming iron and straw, and brass is rotten wood. The arrow could not make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stuff. Darts are counted as stuff. He laughed at the shaking of his hill. Sharp stones are under him. He spreads sharp pointed things upon the mind. He make the deep the boil like a pot. He make up the sea like a pot of ointment. He make up the path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hard upon the earth. There is not his light who was made without fear. He behold the all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shabbat rocket throne Akion. Let the Holy Ghost fall upon his field. Praise.
Uncle Joe, 42. Then Joe answered the Lord and said, I know that thou can do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from me. Who is he that hide a counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, I will speak, I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see of thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words on the Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz, the Tamanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for you have not spoken to me the thing that is right as my servant Job had. Therefore, I take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. And my servant Job should pray for you. For him will I accept, least I did with you after your father, and that you have not spoken to me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. So Eliphaz, the Tamanite, and Bildad, the Shuhite, and so far, the Naamathite went, and did according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came down unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his appointed before and did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one a earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asked. He had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first, Jemiah, and the name of the second, Keziah, and the name of the third, Karen Hopa. And in all the land where no woman found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this, Lil Job, a hundred and forty years, and he saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died, being old and full of days. All praise.